this one is a presentation for the uh, no as i mean the latest uh, the preservation of islamic building values for the research management and conservation so the first um, the first uh, speaker is uh, dr abdul rahman hamad tahmi uh, he is associate professor at conservation uh, faculty of archaeology cairo university egypt so uh, stay tuned to see the presentation and uh, the second presentation is dr yadi mulyadi He is uh, Chief of Association of Indonesian Archaeologists. Uh, he is also focused on research in uh, cultural research management, conservation, and uh, as well as in the Islamic archaeology. So, uh, for to make uh, efficient this time, we will uh, show the presentation from uh, wait a moment from the first speaker and yeah, uh, Dr. Uh, Abdirahman, time in yours. We will share the the presentation. May you hear us, Dr. Abdirahman? Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Wait till we, we will. Yeah, we will start the PowerPoint first. That's very important. Uh, <clears throat> can you hear me well, all? Yes, yes. Okay. Wait, we can hear you. Wait a moment. <clears throat> This one, I think. Reset it. Thank you very much. So this uh, appear in uh, Zoom or? Thank you very much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of you. Awesome. It's much an honor to represent my beloved university, the Cairo University, uh, which gave me the chance to study not only the archaeology, but also the geology. So I can live my passion to work for conservation and preservation of our heritage. Our heritage is universal. Wherever our ancestor, ancestors created and left us sites which carry messages for their structures and materials which used. And it is my wish that I can contribute to help keep these heritage sites alive. And today, I have another wish to help build and strengthen a close cooperation for conservation between the University of Hanasan and uh, in Indonesia and Cairo University to keep alive and spread of our ancestors. We all come from same roots. I like also We are all came from the same roots. We are all have a world heritage, the heritage for every, you know, for my country as Islamic heritage is also for all world heritage in Islamic world. My presentation title about preventive conservation approaches for the Islamic built heritage and Islamic archaeological sites in Egypt. Yes. You know, I will take you, you know, I will do some or make a tour for the most important and significant areas in Egypt, Islamic built heritage. Historic Cairo, for example, we have Egypt comprises from different archaeological sites back to different era. We have monuments and heritage back to the ancient Egypt and Coptic heritage, Batlamic heritage, Greco-Roman heritage, and Islamic heritage. Historic Cairo, for example, comprises for five separate areas of all the city, established in the 10th century. Historic Cairo is one of the world's oldest Islamic cities and became the center of Islamic world. The city 
the old city is packed with classified monuments, about 800, sorry, back again. Sorry, back again. About 800 in all, okay? Spanning with a period of 1,300 years ago, from the fifth century. This includes ancient mosques, madrasas, hammams, sapils, and fountains. The city's huge enclosure wall, which was from mud brick and then after from the stone, limestone. A mighty, a mighty citadel might with, uh, uh, with its collection of mosques and palaces. We have a very important, in the center of the heritage of the, the Cairo, we have a citadel and a mosque of Ibn Tolon in the south through the northern suburb of El Azhar, dominated by the usual Azhar Mosque and the conglomerate of markets. Shop of Alayway that make up the Khan al Khalili is a shop market. Yes, next. The fifth component of the world heritage here is the area of Al Fustat, which is one of the east bank of the Nile to the south of the city center and includes the remains, ruins of the, of the first mosque ever built in Egypt. Mosque of Amr ibn al as well as, as well as the Roman towers and Coptic Christian monuments of, of the area of the area. Uh, with the Arab conquest, or with the Arab, sorry, con not conquest, with the Arab, you know, coming to Egypt in uh, 641 AD, the Caliph Omar Ibn Khattab wanted a new capital for Egypt, refusing Alexandria, which was the uh, capital of Egypt, the former capital of Egypt, city of the Betlamic and Roman period. Fustat or Al Fustat was found, founded by General Amr ibn al As a year later, making it e the, the, the first Islamic capital in Egypt. The city got its name from El Fustat area. It means a tent after the camp set up by the army Amr ibn al, by the army and Amr ibn al As in the future location of the new capital. El Fustat very first building was mosque of Amr ibn al As. So we have the mosque of Amr ibn al As. It's called the mosque El Atik or the old mosque, which was built on the site of the tent of or El Fustat, in which the most of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad gathered. Yeah, next, next. Next. Today, El Fustat is the part of old Cairo district. This is the El Fustat, and now this is called, is a part of you know, gathering, you know, uh, gathering places. So we have Coptic monuments, Islamic monuments together in that place. We have Amr ibn al-As and Al-Fustad. Just next. I will show you an example for the one of the most important mosques in Egypt, the mosque of Amr ibn al-As, is the, one, is the oldest surviving mosque in Egypt and Africa. General Amr ibn al-As, 64, 60, uh, 164, was one of the first companions of the Prophet Muhammad. After coming Egypt in 640 AD, he founded it the first Islamic capital, al Fustat, which falls within the modern city of Cairo. Year later, by the order of Caliph Amr ibn al-Khattab, Omar ibn al-Khattab, he also founded the mosque of Amr ibn al-As, which became the new capital's first building. Yes. And this is the photo of the Amr ibn al-As, and this is the main entrance of the mosque of Amr ibn al-As. And, yes, second. 
open courtyard and fountain here of the mosque of Amr ibn al -As. Yes. Interior view of the mosque and the mosque from inside also. Cheers. And one of the corridors of the mosque is called Darvi Walk. And this is the prayer niche. Okay, yes. And this is the stock of the curated motifs in the mosque of Amr ibn al -As. Here, this is very important thing also. It's an Islamic building and sites listed as a world heritage in UNESCO. So we have El Fostat, Mosque Ahmad ibn Tulan, the Citadel, and the Fatimid. Uh, cemetery, necropolis, and the Imam Chef and Necropolis. Uh, uh, so we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five sites, you know, including uh, as a, you know, listed as a world heritage in UNESCO. So let's, next. this is very important, uh, uh, you know, map for the historic Islamic Cairo. So we can see a lot of darbs, a lot of you know streets and azekas and a lot of places and different kind of mosques appeals and the uh, sub and the, the suburbs you know around the islamic cairo next here also this is the location of the most important four mosques like amr ibn al as and ibn tolon and al azhar mosque and al hakim mosque and el fustat so this is very important one, location of them. Also, next. When we are speaking about the architectural heritage, we are speaking about a built heritage. It's one of the achievements that had been achieved in the field of construction throughout the different era of history. The urban heritage is not limited to different buildings, but includes in addition to these buildings, neighborhoods, also historical cities and their various environmental surroundings, which are an integral part of this heritage that people, church, and remain keen to preserve, devote to achieving this goal, all technical, scientific, and financial capabilities that have been afforded so that it remains to the contemporary and future generation in the future in good condition. So preserving its structural and decorated elements and the historical, cultural, artistic, scientific, economic, social, and political value there. Okay, next. So uh, next, next, sorry, next, next. Here we have elements of urban heritage, and it's important to preserve. So we have urban heritage elements, built heritage, historic cities, and heritage sites. We have indicators of the historical and cultural importance of any buildings and heritage sites, like we have time indicator, we have symbolic indicator. Also, we will refer to I will refer to the importance of preservation of urban heritage and then the different views on the constant tangible you know movable heritage positive perspectives perceptives and negative perceptives next urban heritage like we what we have in Egypt as Islamic heritage are those buildings that have historical and cultural significance, whether they are religious, civil, military, or social buildings that have a single multiple texture, texture in their different textures. Yes, next. So step by step, we will go to the conservation. So historic cities are cities that still peer and peer the details of the history and still maintain their architectural and decorative styles continuously with interruptions such as the historic city of Cairo, the city of, and also the city of Sana'a, the city of Fez, Cairo One, Damascus, and other historical cities. 
and some cultural centers that belongs to, to those cities. Just next. Yes, Erwin. Uh, th this also a uh, uh, map, very important map, and close-up map in Arabic. I'm sorry, in Arabic, but it's a rare map, and uh, it's for the whole and each building in in different Mamluk and Fatimid, uh, you know, uh, autumn uh, uh, in historical Cairo. Next. Next. We have two indicators. So we have time indicator, symbolic indicator. The time indicator, ex it expresses the history of buildings and heritage site and historical events that witnessed from which the time series was formed in those buildings and the site. Symbolic indicator is, you know, the first of which are the extent of the expression of heritage and the sites about their age, history, and traditions of those uh, who built them. Secondly, the originality. And the third is the distinction compared to other buildings in the same period of time. Yes. The importance of preservation of Islamic urban heritage, I gathered them in five items. The, it reflects the, the national identity. It's a source for different values. Economic, economic advancement, sources of, of knowledge and a way for peace. A, pay, a way for peace here for in, in Egypt is like here you can see a mosque and a church so beside each other. So that this is a message for a peace for all world. Yes, next, next. <clears throat> Next. Next. You know, construction materials in Islamic heritage of Old Cairo. There are many building materials that were used in the construction of various archaeological uh, buildings. On top of which are stones, especially limestone and sandstone, uh, which are which was commonly used in construction of archaeological. Uh, buildings in Cairo, especially in the Mamluk era and Autumn era. In addition to that, uh, we have other decorative stones, such as basalt, granite, marble, and sandstone, which is red sandstone, and different colors of sandstone depends on the impurities of the, uh, you know, of the components of the stones. Among of the other building materials are important woods and locally which were used in the manufacture of wooden, ceilings, doors, windows, various wooden ornaments. The builders also used the many mortars that were used to connect stone buildings, as a jointers, to connect stone building materials and red bricks, including lime mortar, gypsum mortar, and the mortar of Kosrum Mel. Next. Stones, for example, we have one of the most, you know, widely used stone in the Islamic Cairo is the limestone. So the limestone, you know, used as, as a sedimentary rock and came from the Muqattam, its quarry beside the uh, Cairo. It's, it's called a quarry, a Muqattam quarry. Next, we can see Next, everyone. Yes, this is the uh, Mokattam, uh, you know, quarry or Mokattam mountain. And this is the source of the construction, you know, and stones as a construction materials used in Islamic, you know, to build the Islamic heritage, as you see now. Yes, next. This is, you know, a photo and for the, uh, you know, one of the most important mosque there, you know, constructed on the mass, uh, rock mass. And also this is the, the place where they took some and uh, took the uh, blocks of stones to build 
the uh, their buildings like uh, you know uh, most of buildings like Al Azhar Mosque. So from this uh, quarry. Yes, next. So here, this is some of the uh, you know the facades here of the one of the Fatimid mosque. So here we can see the significance and the importance and of the uh, Islamic heritage in Cairo. And, uh, you know, and it, it, we should so preserve it by using, you know, even if interventive, you know, uh, methodology or by, you know, a conservation or preventive conservation way. So the next one. Also here, one of the slabs, the creative also slabs, written one in the Cairo, Khal Khalili. And here the prayer, one of the uh, prayer niche and really it's beauty, flex it's beauty. And the decorative stones from granite, basalt, and the gilded, you know, facade, you know, facade of the, uh, uh, the prayer niche. The next and the member, also one of the most important prayer, you know, niche and facade prayer facade and the member, and it's a rare one in historical historic Cairo. That's next. Here we have some problems. So now we you know, talk about the importance of the heritage, the values of heritage and construction materials and the introduction about urban architecture heritage. Now we are going to speak about the problem of Islamic heritage in Egypt. So we have, for example, we have, you know, mechanical factors, we have physiochemical factors and we have, you know, chemical factors. Uh, so first of all, one of the most challenges that you know affected the uh, uh, you know Islamic heritage in Egypt. It's the earthquakes. So the earthquakes, you know, especially which happened in 1992. So this affected the uh, uh, and damaged a lot of buildings in e in Egypt uh, and including the uh, uh, you know uh, built heritage. Next. <coughs> Next. Some technical information are yeah. um, next. So this is the you know the effects of the you know 1992 earthquake in Egypt. Next. And also the results of the earthquakes happened in Egypt and the damage of Islamic built heritage. Next. Also and the cracks, yes, next. Also here, some scaffoldings as a result of to protect here scaffolding as a, a solution and a temporary uh, solution to protect some of the Wakala, uh, the street of Habs of Rahpa and uh, to, um, you know, protect the building from more destruction. Next. Also, the scaffoldings to protect the building from more failure. Also, we have a very important thing and a source and a problem, you know, that we challenge in Egypt, uh, uh, you know, which, uh, you know, affects and influence on the uh, uh, Islamic heritage, the damage due to vibration. The vibrations here, like, you know, as a result of, you know, uh, and it's, it is a mechanical loot mechanical load and environmental load and effects on a long term. So we can see the, uh, the, the, the cracks on the buildings, on the walls and the structure and the structural elements and architectural elements and uh, the, the frequency of the vibration is very important. When the frequency, you know, the minimum frequency and uh, you know, it is a safe minimum frequency is 200 microns. If more than 200 microns, so more than 200, so we are in, in a risk. Yes, next. 
So this is here, we can see the cars, we can see the vehicles, and you know, this is very, you know, it can uh, do a lot of vibrations and uh, influence on a long term on the buildings. Next. Subsurface water, and it is considered, I'm um, sorry, yes, back again. Subsurface water, one of the most problem problems you know, you know, we challenge in Cairo, uh, uh, you know, which influence on the uh, belt heritage. It's subsurface water. It's considered one of the most important factors of the damage that, uh, that damage the archaeological buildings. And archaeological buildings suffer from the uh, subsurface water and uh, sources of water so much. So it is one of the established and well established facts of restorers and conservators that the main factor behind the deterioration of urban heritage is the high hum humidity inside these buildings. Uh, it has been observed the level of ground or, sorry, subsurface water in the city of Cairo range between one meter below of the, uh, uh, under the foundation of the buildings. And uh, the, after that, the, um, the water rise up to five to four meters in the buildings. Just next. As here, we can see the sources of water, and then we can see that this water can affect the walls. So, you know, uh, you know, uh, step by step or time by time, you can see the salination and salts and degradation happened in the walls of and affects the decorative motifs uh, on the on the walls. As we can see here, this is as a result of rising up the uh, subsurface water, you know, on the walls and the, its effects on the decorative motives. Next. Here also the salts as a result of humidity and for sure salts and uh, crystallization and recrystallization. One crystallization, again crystallization, so we can see the, uh, the stone blocks is converted to the powder shape and uh, it's affected on the structural uh, uh, stability of the buildings. And here also the plants inside the mosque and the plants play, play a, a, a mechanical role of destruction of the flooring and structural elements of the buildings. Next. Concepts here, concepts of preventive conservation. So we uh, spoke about the problems, we spoke about the values of heritage, and now we are going to speak about the concepts for preventive conservation for those built heritage or Islamic built heritage. It's well known that the term of preventive conservation in the field of archeology span and cultural heritage was initially used in museums and, uh, 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 and uh, in museums and museums. Actions, so, the, the meaning of preventive conservation in museum, it means actions and steps aimed to, in, aimed at to preventing or reducing spoilage or deterioration by controlling the climatic factor and creating appropriate conditions for the maintenance of holding and may also include an action undertaken by museum curator as well as the treatments undertaken by conservation professional to destabilize the, st the state of antiquities or the minimum. So this is the concept of the preventive conservation and start, started with museology in general. Next. Experts in the field of preventive conservation or maintenance have used concepts that had the same meaning of the other science, such as in, uh, in medicine and environment, uh, environment science. So uh, the concept differ, differs in the field of archaeological site and, and in historical building than in the field of museum. So when we are speaking about buildings, it's different, you know. Uh, uh, in the field of antiquities, or especially in France, the concept exists as you know, it means saving and documenting. So when you are doing documentation and saving for the buildings, so you are doing, you know, in, in indirect way, a preventive conservation as in uh, France concept. 
rest. Preventive conservation concept is widely used in the field of medicine, as I said, and, and is divided into three levels, the primary prevention and secondary prevention and retired prevention. Here, where I, the first primary prevention, sorry, back again. Sorry, everyone, back again, yes. Primary prevention, when, so we have, a, we have a, an Islamic, for example, the mosque. And this mosque, now we are going to do a preventive conservation is to prevent the, you know, the, the causes of the deterioration, you know, before happening. The secondary prevention is when there's a little bit, a little bit, there is a building deteriorated. So we have to interfere and we have to make a preventive conservation. So the risks is, uh, uh, you know, we can see the risk now and we have to do a preventive conservation. Retire prevention is we must do a preventive conservation. This is for a failure and for high risk you know, uh, for the high risk uh, buildings, high risk buildings. And so we have to intervene so, uh, by preventive conservation. Again, uh, next. Preventive maintenance means studying all factors like lead to the damage and analyzing them so that the factors most likely to cause damage are narrowly identified through examination, documentation, monitoring. So preventive conservation, so start with examination, visual examination, and also investigation, then documentation, then the monitoring measures. For the UNESCO definition of preventive conservation, it means preventive, preventing, it means preventing damage factors that affect cultural heritage through the preparation and implementation of policies and implementation steps for the prepa preparing the appropriate uh, climate environment, studying risks and how to face them. This is the uh, concept of the UNESCO about the preventive conservation. Yes. Uh, when we are speaking about preventive conservation, also I'm speaking about management a little bit. So when we are doing crisis and disaster management by, first of all, you know, a production, planning, and training. So we are doing a part of preventive conservation for the buildings. Next. A strategy, for example, if we have a wind, and if we have uh, an earthquake, uh, so this is, or the subsurface water. So what is the plan and what is the, you know, the steps which we have to take to prevent and to prevent and to keep and to preserve the Islamic or any uh, built heritage. One of the, you know, the first is the data acquisition that, that uh, for example, if we have wind, so we have to know the wind speed, wind direction, and uh, everything about wind. So, so to analyze after that, data analyze, so we can see the uh, uh, features of the effect of the winds and to know the main exactly the main direction and from where it come and so we have to take after that encountering plan and to put for example uh, you know uh, walls to put uh, trees so in the in the same direction of the winds so this is you know the plan that equalization that analysis and encountering plan next Preventive conservation in Islamic or in, in any built heritage, you know, uh, we can do, we can do preventive conservation of ancient building from the effects of climate, so environment. We can do preventive conservation of ancient buildings from environmental pollution. We can do also preventive con conservation to preserve the ancient buildings from effects of subsurface water. Preventive Conservation, we can do it to protect the archaeological elements in the buildings from microbiological attack. Preventive conservation can do during the structural repairing and retrofitting works. Next. 
here an example for a conservation for the doom and the interventions in the doom of Imam Shafi Muslim is an example for straight word of technical rebellion and and it reflects also the meaning including the meaning of intervent or preventive conservation so the doom of Muslim Muslim of Imam Shafi so here on the left is uh, you know um, yeah, before restoration on the left and the right and after restoration. So this photo is from 1961. Next. Here, this is the dome nowadays, but a little bit from the 19s. So uh, the dome of the mausoleum of Al Imam Al Shafi. Next. Nowadays, there's a restoration project of Al Imam Shafi. So, so before Al Imam Shafi had, had been restored, nowadays is under restoration also. So we have this is the main problem of the Islamic built heritage. Islamic built heritage is not, you know, like any like ancient Egypt, Egyptians monuments, for example, like pyramids, tombs, and also. But because of the nature and the reusing, for example, of the mosques. And because of that, uh, the mosques <clears throat> and sapils, uh, uh, you know, located beside the people and the houses and blocks and the uh, roads. So the nature of preservation is different. So we restore the monuments and Islamic heritage and need a lot of budgets from time to time. So from 1961 and after that you know nowadays we are make a restoration again so the the nature of the islamic built heritage is different and need a lot of caring and really need the concept of the preventive conservation especially from documentation point of view a uh, restoration project of imam shafi started from uh, uh, 1916 january and uh, ongoing nowadays, funded by the ambassadors fund uh, of the for preservation for the cultural heritage, uh, you know, from United States. Um, introduction about the Imam Shafi, Muhammad Ibn Idris Shafi is the founder of one of the four schools of Sunni Islam. Most of its doom and uh, the main shrine date back to uh, 1200 and the uh, uh, compartments to the 100, 1187 and later addition from uh, 14th to 19th century. The building features a wooden dome decorated with various decorations dating back to the period between 13th and 19th centuries and uh, is considered the largest dome in Egypt. It's Finally, curved wooden cabin and an example for the IP period. Next. <clears throat> the restoration activities in the first phase, which had been finished, so, so the restoration of the decorative stokos in the facade, cracks, restoration, injection, replacement of stones, and jointers filling, solution of the soil settlement. Uh, colored gilded marble restoration and the restoration in the second phase which is ongoing is the restoration of the main entrance restoration of the winds doors ceiling and side lightning so here the restoration plan and there are some interventions and there are some you know measurements of measures that reflects the preventive conservation in a direct in indirect way so this is, you know, the works of the dome of Al Imam Shafi of restoration, you know, uh, which, you know, uh, ongoing nowadays. And this is an example I chose, you know. So we have the previous restoration from 1961, and also again, so in recent year, and from uh, uh, nine, uh, 2016 until now, again, again you know restoration again for the building so islamic built heritage 
very important to follow the conservation plan and also the con preventive conservation concept and also from the management concept. The management concept, it means to use something is very important and something is a technical, a little bit is to use a GIS and a remote sensing in documenting and also in management of the sites and not only in Egypt, but also in all archeological buildings, Islamic uh, sites all over the world. So that's why uh, I'm also, I, I'm calling for documentation for the buildings. And this is a very, very nice solution for, you know, protecting the, our Islamic heritage and is a part of preventive conservation for the Islamic belt heritage. Thank you very much for listening and uh, watching me. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. It's really great uh, lecture today. Uh, we have a lot of information. So start from the problem to examine the the cultural heritage and like uh, examination, uh, documentation, and monitoring, and until the uh, preventive uh, conservation. It's really important. I think in Indonesia also have some problem uh, with the uh, conservation and preservation of the cultural heritage, even in the Muslim uh, era. So thank you. So much, but uh, we will move to the uh, other 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 uh, speakers. But uh, I think we want to say that uh, some for the participant who have already have uh, some question, you can put your question in the uh, chat box, and later we will uh, we will answer it by the speaker. And yeah. I think there a lot of uh, a lot of questions already appear in the chat box. Yes, I see, and it's really great information to share it. So, and uh, we're important for the participants. Uh, we will read the, your questions after the second uh, presentation. So, uh, thank you so much for the uh, the trap, the Rahman. And we will move to the second speaker first after before we answering uh, some questions related to your material. So, uh, next, uh, Mr. Yadi Mulyadi, time is yours. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good afternoon, everybody, and also good morning for from Dr. Aman and Dr. Fahmi. A good presentation, Dr. Fahmi is very interesting. Uh, thank you, Erwin. So right now, I, uh, I will share my presentation. <coughs> okay. So uh, in this part two in international webinar, uh, my present uh, the, the part is about preservation value of Islamic building, through research, management, and conservation, preserving Islamic heritage in Indonesia. Dr. Pahmi already uh, presentation about the heritage conservation in Egypt, and right now I'd like to share about the preservation Islamic heritage in Indonesia. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, if we discuss about Islam, heritage, and preservation, the study of cultural heritage preservation practice in the context of Muslim societies has been constructed and absorbed through specific historical trajectories and challenges. This originated within the field of cultural heritage preservation through its own history and principle, which have complicated the interplay between heritage and religious values and use. Yeah, <clears throat> this is uh, one of our heritage in Goa, uh, Katanka, Moscow. Okay, next. Uh, in second slide, I would like to say no heritage is no history. As a French historian, Charles Victor Langlois said, history is made by documents which are the monuments that remain from the ideas of the precedents and their action. And if there are no document, there is no history. So history, the past, and also the heritage is very important. And next, a living nation that value their tradition seeks to preserve significant historical traces related to their past. In doing so, 
they are, they ensure that they have an authentic record of their contribution to the advancement of civilization, art, and sciences. Historical site and building represent the physical evidence of human culture that should be valued and protected as part part of human cultural heritage or national identity. So that's why we must preserve our historical site and also a historical building. <coughs> from <coughs> Presently, in Indonesia, also other cities develop in many aspects, cultural, economic, and legal following the development and functional changes in their surrounding, where are these except have a considerable impact in historical site or building. And this is for the example, this is the Katangka Mosque, the old mosque in South Sulawesi, Indonesia, the condition right now. But before changes, the building, the old building is like this. Yeah, so uh, the development and functional changes is very, uh, have a considerable impact in historical site or building. Yeah, okay. Uh, Next, I would like to share about the list of Islamic heritage in Indonesia. This is one of the uh, the heritage, the most her heritage, uh, Baitur Rahman Mosque in Aceh. <coughs> okay, uh, first, uh, if we discuss about the historical Islamic historical heritage, <coughs> the first we know about Kraton or Feles. Keraton in, in Indonesia. So the palace or palace is a past building that is used as the residence of a royal king or queen. In addition, the palace is also usually functioned to run the affair of the kingdom. The palace is generally sur surrounded by a large pole hike as a symbol of separation between the king and the common people. Well, in Indonesia itself, there are quite a lot of relics of the Kingdom of Islam in the palace that is still very awake to this day. This is such as is a Kasepuhan in Cirebon. So this is uh, main examples. This is uh, just a little bit the Kraton in Indonesia. Kraton in Yogyakarta, in Yogyakarta Hadiningrat, uh, one of the famous Kraton in Indonesia, and Paku Alam Temple also and also the Kraton Surakarta di Ningrat in Central Java, Pura Mangkunegaraan in Central Java also, Kraton Banten, uh, like Kaibon and Kasepuhan, and Kraton Kanoman, Kraton Kasirbonan, Kraton Maimun, and Bima Feles, atau Istana Bima, and Kraton Wolio Buton in South East Sulawesi. This is uh, Benteng Wolio, uh, some part of the Kraton Buton in South East Sulawesi. Yeah. This is uh, uh, the pipe for picture about the Kraton. Kraton is mean the palace. I took it from <laughs> internet. So uh, this is the Kraton Kaibon Banten. Uh, and this is the Kraton Bima. This is the, only the ruin. This is uh, still function, and but not the Kraton. Uh, right now, uh, this building, this Kraton, used for the museum. And this is the Kraton Surakarta di Ningrat. And the other one is Kraton Maimun in uh, West Sumatra, right now using by uh, museum also. So, uh, Kraton is one of the historical, Islam historical building, uh, right now used by the government or the, the government used to become the museum, not the palace. <clears throat> the second is mas Masjid or Mosque. Yeah, the second legacy of the Islamic Empire, not only Kraton, but also Moscow. We can easily encounter is the mosque. Yes, as a place of worship is certainly this building into a point that cannot be missed by the member of the kingdom in his time. Generally, mosques are built in the square close to the palace. In Indonesia, there are many relics of Islamic Empire tangible mosques, such as the uh, Great Mosque, Masjid Agung Demak, uh, Surakarta Great Mas, Kasepuhan Great Mas, Sunan Ampel Mas, Great Mas of Banten, Sendang Dubur, Baitur Rahman Mas, Katangka. This is uh, Masjid Agung Demak, and this is uh, in South Sulawesi also uh, the old Mas in uh, Palopo, and this is uh, Banten Mas. Yeah, and 
the third in Islamic heritage in Indonesia is tomb and graveyard. In addition to the palace and mosque, complete tomb and gravestones are veteran Islam is also well found in Indonesia as evidence of the historical relic of the Islamic Empire, uh, such as tomb of Sunan Gunung Jati. This one, this picture is uh, the tomb of Sunan Gunung Jati. A lot of ceramic in this wall, and tomb of Sunan Tembayat in Klaten, tomb of Trolloyo in Mojokerto, tomb of the King of Mataram in Imogiri, Yogyakarta, and the tomb complex of Sultan Hasanuddin. This is, what, this is the tomb, Sultan Hasanuddin tomb in Goa, South Sulawesi, and many uh, tomb of the other uh, king in Islamic period. Okay, this is the other the other tombs. Sheikh Yusuf tomb, not only in Goa, and if we we, we discuss about Sheikh Yusuf tomb uh, in Makassar and also in South Africa. This is a uh, Talo graveyard from Goa Talo Kingdom, and right now the <coughs> our community in South Sulawesi still. Uh, make uh, going to the the uh, the graveyard to make a ritual. Yeah. So <clears throat> next, I would like to uh, say about heritage and conservation. First, the concept of of conserved and preserved historic cities in the Islamic world is recent development. Heritage planning in historic cities, like the one of Islamic societies have to be considered carefully. They often do not represent the condition that give rise to the traditional urban conservation and preservation in planning approach. The concept of built heritage conservation is very complicated. In terms of planning approaches, actor involvement, technical method, and implementation. And implementation process also. Nowadays, the heritage planning of historic site and cities has become significant as one of the designated urban world heritage site has developed across the world over the last two decades. Yeah, Dr. Pahmi already uh, presented about the world heritage site in Egypt from Islamic heritage. It's very, <coughs> very beautiful, and I, I hope uh, Indonesia can have a world heritage site also in the future from Islamic period. Okay, heritage have to be seen as a per, as, as part from Spark part from the search of historic knowledge as it is concerned with the repackaging of the past for some purpose in the present and also future. Built heritage conservation is a positive, dynamic, and wide ranging concept exceeding the earlier narrow sense of preservation. The latter means preventing further decrease, whereas conservation actually refers to changing. So uh, I I get uh, the point from G. D. Mitya in his art, in article 2017, Islamic heritage and values. He said if there is a fight in debates about the religious context of conservation principle, particularly when it comes to Islamic heritage and value, still to be overtaken is an interrogation of how the dominant heritage discourse and world heritage model understanding Islamic value and whether there is an emerging resistance to Saga's alternative way of serving the value of materiality in this context. In addition, the physical and rhetorical construction and destruction of cultural heritage in the context of religion has not been discussed. Do research how heritage is contrasted within the spiritual value of Islam demands that we depart from assumption that the attendance of Islam is identity in the record of material culture. Islamic heritage knowledge that the completeness and variety of Islamic material culture may be recognizable and used to construe Muslim society in the past. In Indonesia, it has been argued that Islam did not construct a civilization, it provided one, resulting in the lack of impunity in the form that Islam took. Heritage conservation has to oversight side declared the past in a positive way as inherently valuable and worth cultivating, but also managing and detaining the future by concealing the heritage site, it is a new form. Indonesia, like other Asian nations, has rich history and culture of challenging the nature of the global heritage discourse. 
this endurance must be seen as authenticity way to prevent the destruction of heritage value that will come at the hand of inner global resource such opposition opposition emerges therefore as reality non-western understanding of cultural heritage so in indonesia we have cultural heritage law uh, the first base for cultural heritage law is monument in ordinance later into monument ordinance year 1935 and right now the new one is we have we have uh, <clears throat> 2010 cultural heritage law is an object building structure site and area that need to make to be managed by the national local government which can make improvement in community participation to protect improve and utilize cultural heritage the rule for ownership of building heritage can be owned by the state or individual and change the function of the building yeah the criteria of cultural heritage object are have minimum lifetime and represent a cultural style with age of 50 years have cultural value that can strengthen the national identity and have important historical educational or cultural value cultural heritage method as written in the law or management preservation protection rescue custody zoning preservation restoration development research revitalization adaptation utilization and multi multiplication so <clears throat> in other hand in on other hand we we using the other act such as the penis carter uh, are the adequate uh, and Kaur had described that to the expand in the Spanish character, concern of the material object of conservation to this show of the material local custom and tradition. So it is need to be conserved and modified to the discrimination of valuable physical culture from its living culture. Yeah, because in Indonesia, if we we discuss about historical Islamic historical building, we uh, this is not a dead monument, but this is a living monument, living culture. Uh, we, uh, the society still use the historical building, the same uh, function in the past, such must be like most. Yeah. So the conclusion is to comprehend the build of heritage, one must also differentiate between the world of the religious, the secular and the sacred within Islamic culture and nature. Islamic law in here in Sharia does not offer any admonition on whether preserving Islamic heritage is required, recommended, dis discouraged, prohibited, or permitted, but morally independent, especially in Aceh. So, Islamic historical conservation must be considered about local identity and also Sharia as, a, as aspect preservation heritage tangible and intangible also how to build urban heritage in islam communities heritage urban heritage and build urban heritage conservation in the era of uncertainty with considered islamic communities to get new perspective in heritage planning it is important to understand the relationship that built heritage conservation of islamic communities perspective that consider sharia aspect and local tradition in built urban heritage that can affect to heritage planning in the era of uncertainty. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, some of reference I used to make this presentation. And uh, I think that's all for the for my presentation. Thank you for uh, the all the attention, all the participants and uh, give to Erwin as a moderator. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yadi Mulyadi, for the presentation today. So as you understand, uh, two different uh, countries, different region has uh, different challenges to the related to conservation and preservation of the cultural her heritage. Like as you understand, like uh, in different material that we use between Indonesia and uh, Egypt and also the form of the um, <clears throat> Uh, Islamic heritage, for example, in Egypt, mostly, maybe, mostly, perhaps in uh, 
uh, mosque is uh, the, the top is made is like the shape like a dome but in indonesia most of the old mosque is uh, is like triangle uh, which is uh, acculturated from the uh, temple because indonesia before islam come they have a um, hinduism and buddhism era so they have different time a different type of the top of the mosque so it's challenging also the other the other challenging also is i think in the season because in the in egypt different season indonesia also has different season i think more challenging because uh, maybe because of the tropical country or uh, yeah and we have any problem special for like biological microbiological attack or uh, the water as we understand that the water content a lot of uh, chemical composition that impact to the uh, cultural heritage building and the last is about living monument because most of the living monument i think is the same in egypt and indonesia living monument has the same function still in, uh, is the living monument so thank you so much for all the uh, do uh, to all of the uh, speaker today we have a lot of questions um, in the chat box and we will try to read uh, one by one first of all um, dr abdul rahman did you hear us Hello. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. We uh, we have questions from the uh, and Irfan. He is uh, work in the uh, cultural heritage and preservation office in Indonesia. Because in Indonesia we have also this uh, institution. Uh, he asked about: Is there any relationship between the phenomenon of natural disaster or globalization with the Islamic architecture heritage in Cairo? Sure. Uh, yes, the climate change. The, it is uh, globally, for example, uh, the climate change is, is everywhere. Here nowadays, Egypt, uh, you know, the fluctuation between the temperature, for example, uh, and the temperature, the high temperature uh, degrees now is so high. So it's different from 10 years ago. 10 years ago. So that the temperature and the fluctuation between temperature and uh, the uh, the humidity so can do a lot of damage for the uh, for the uh, building of the uh, islamic belt heritage also uh, uh, in egypt we have a lot of epicenters for the earthquake so um, we have but it's not uh, uh, 2.3 2.3 uh, 3.2 uh, and not more, but not more. But we have a, a, around 100 earthquakes every day in Egypt. 100 earthquakes. So it's proven and from different epicenters. And this is this is for the long, for in the the long term. It you know uh, it affects the uh, the monuments and the structure uh, generally. Yes, uh, there is a natural disaster has happened here. It's the 1992 earthquakes uh, uh, earthquake which you know damaged most of Cairo and uh, you know uh, uh, Grand or uh, the uh, Grand Cairo generally Giza and Cairo itself and Kalubeya. Uh, the buildings, including the uh, Islamic Belt Heritage. Okay, thank you so much. So, I'll move to the second questions. Um, from the Moses Setiono, I think he's from uh, Ireland University. He has a lot of questions. But it's really nice questions. Are there any restoration efforts for five pyramids, like what Egyptian government has done to Imam Shafi Musk? Imam Shafi Musk because in the past they think that in the past the pyramid were covered with the uh, with the gold uh, with cover and the gold cover on the top is there any uh, uh, same uh, uh, restoration efforts uh, between islamic building and from the pyramid and this is through the information that in the in the top of the pyramid they have white cover and gold cover in the past yes the pyramid um yeah this okay uh, the pyramid logic, the pyramid we have uh, the pyramid as a body. Okay, the pyramid uh, compound you know comprises from three parts. Uh, generally, from the valley temple, crossway, and tem you know um, uh, mortuary, uh, uh, and the the building of the pyramid. The building of the pyramid itself comprises from the body, the body as a casing stone, 
uh, the casem stone and the body stone. And there is something called bremidium. Bremidium is a small pyramid, you know, located on the top of the pyramid mm -hmm. and gilded by antinum, antinum or a gold, you know, gilded by a gold. But, you know, this bremidium falling down. And if you go, if you want to go in the future to the Kipren pyramid, you can see the reconstructed bremidium of the Great Pyramid, for example, of the Khifri. So the, the secondly, the restoration of the pyramids and ancient Egyptian uh, you know, monuments is different from the Islamic heritage. So when we are speaking about Islamic heritage, we are speaking about living, living monuments. When we are speaking about pyramids, tombs, old, you know, old uh, Egyptian, all the uh, ancient Egyptian monuments, we are speaking about dead monuments. So now the pyramids, now there is no function for the pyramids. So, and the, uh, uh, the living monuments as a, you know, represented for the Islamic, it's reused, can be reused. So uh, the, the restoration works for the pyramids different, so different from, you know, the Islamic built heritage. For example, when we are doing replacement, replacement for the blocks, when we are doing reconstruction, we cannot do reconstruction for the pyramids or the part of pyramids. We cannot do a reconstruction. The concept is wrong because we are dealing, we are treating, or we are, uh, you know, we are uh, treating with an old or uh, uh, dead monuments. But we are using the concept of anastelosis. We are doing uh, the concept of anastelosis of the restoration of the pyramids. And, but in the Islamic built heritage, we can do reconstruction in a part of wall, in a whole wall. We can do the whole reconstruction if we have a document, you know, documentation. And if you have uh, uh, the photos, imaginary uh, uh, archive, so we can do a reconstruction for the mosques, for the sapils, and so on. So uh, yes, nowadays there is a management plan for the uh, developing of the uh, the area of the pyramids, for example, in Giza. So we are going to protect uh, to protect and preserve the area by management and the services around the uh, you know around the pyramid, the Giza pyramid. I hope I can you know, answer this well. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So, still wait, maybe we still have another question next. Uh, we will move to a second uh, speaker first. Uh, well, for Mr. Yanni we already have questions. Uh, it has any challenge in for the conservation or restoration of the, from the uh, wood material from the top of the mosque, uh, like we should uh, rebuild again with the same material, with the same quality, or uh, it depends on the situation, location, or the imaging of the uh, 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 top of the mosque? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Erwin. Well, if, if we, we, talk about the rebuild uh, as a part of conservation or revitalization uh, in Islamic heritage building, the important thing is uh, we must make our research first, uh, make uh, some feasibility studies. So uh, we have a conclusion from the feasibility study. Uh, we, ca we can rebuild with the same technology, with the same with the same uh, shape, uh, but if we cannot do the the to keep the originality, uh, we, we we cannot change the the top of in the mosque. But the important is we must doing some research first before we make a revitalization or conservation for our historical building. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. So move to the first speaker again. We have a questions uh, from the uh, Association of Indonesian Archaeologists in the East Java, Imam Mashkup. 
he want to ask about uh, what about the damage uh, historical building what did the government or conservator do for the damage historical building in egypt is it possible to rebuild rebuild again or or uh, it's not rebuilt like maybe we'll, they will compare with the indonesian uh, uh, government uh, decision uh, so what is the government conservator do for the damaged historical building in Egypt. Is it possible to rebuild again? Yeah, Dr. Abdul Rahman. Yes, you are speaking about the rebuilding the, the pyramids, for example? No, the, 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 yeah, the, the damage of the building, if they already, uh, maybe they know that in the past we have this kind of building, but nowadays we couldn't see. So is it have uh, another decision that we can build again or different decision under the conservation and restoration rule in Egypt? Uh, for the pyramids, yes? For example, the pyramids or another building that have damage or, yeah. Uh, I didn't get it, but, uh, you know, I'm so sorry, I didn't get it, can you conclude? Okay, uh, the question is, uh, what is the, the, the uh, what, is, what did the government or conservator do for the damaged historical building in Egypt? Is it possible to rebuild again? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I said it before, <laughs> that we can do rebuilding and reconstruction if we have guidelines. So, mm -hmm. if we have guidelines, especially with the living monuments, when I'm speaking about living monuments, when I spe I'm speaking about Islamic built heritage, okay? So, I'm speaking about yeah. mosques, I'm speaking about sapirs, I'm speaking about wikalas, I'm speaking about madrasas, so schools. So, that's why here uh, the rebuilding or reconstruction of the building of Islamic heritage, yes, we can do it if there is. A guideline if there is uh, 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 documentation papers and everything you know is known about the build and we uh, about the building and uh, we can do a rebuild, you know reconstruction but but this concept of rebuilding of reconstruction we cannot do it in pyramids we cannot do it in ancient Egyptian uh, monuments but we can, you know, use the concept of anastolosis. It means we can use the materials which falling down from the pyramids to rebuild it. Not, okay? And the same mortar and the same construction material, you know, of the, uh, of the pyramids originally. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. So maybe the last questions well we give opportunity to all of the participants who can speak directly to the speaker to ask questions so prepare from uh, this moment while we ask one question again but for the participant if, if somebody want to ask directly to the speaker we give you opportunity uh, just raise your hand and uh, the host will choose uh, which which who want to uh, ask directly to the speaker so maybe the last question for uh, for us this moderator from the uh, chat box from the Dr. Abdul Rahman, is there any difficult um, conservation related to the material of the building, like we should import from the outset of Egypt, or uh, all of the material is uh, is provided from an Egypt Egypt country? Uh, uh, you know, he you know he asking about the materials used for restoration. Yes. 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 The materials <clears throat> generally. The concept, the materials used for restoration is, uh, you know, we have also a guidelines for that. Uh, if we are going to the, for example, the project of Al Azhar Mosque, the project of Al Azhar Mosque, when they, you know, uh, restore it and do some rebuilding or replacement of the blocks, the, the replacement of the blocks, so we go to the same quarry of the old blocks so the blocks highly withered and highly deteriorated so we cannot use it again okay but we replace it with a new block stone block from and with the same physical and mechanical characteristics from the same quarry and also we uh, the the uh, as i said preventive conservation uh, can you know pass through uh, 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 examination, documentation, and then planning or intervention. 
the, the documentation or examination or analysis and investigation, we can know the, the, all the construction materials, such as mortar, and we can create new mortar. Okay, we can do new mortar with a, a, a new material, such as adhesive, okay, like paraloid, like vacaro OH. Now we have nano uh, uh, calcium carbonate, we have uh, nano, you know, uh, nano materials uh, can mix uh, with the old material to increase the you know uh, 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 the uh, you know to limitations. Those new materials must be reversible and must be uh, uh, you know little. So th there is a rule: the least is done is the best restoration. This is a rule during the restoration. Uh, most of restoration works. Okay, thank you so much. So I think it's a lot of questions, but we have limited time. So who want to uh, ask directly or have a questions uh, for the speaker? We have give you opportunity like uh, one minute to ask your questions. Is anybody who want to ask directly to the speaker? Just raise your hand and you can ask directly. And host, please uh, look at carefully of the participant if anybody want to ask. Uh, directly, you can uh, give information. No, so if there is no, we would like to. I say that I mean, there are many, uh, uh, um, maybe in the future, we have collaboration to do uh, some both of the uh, pure uh, archaeological research and uh, also the cultural research management and conservation because like I just informed you that like Indonesia mostly I think uh, no little just little people know about mortar because mostly here if they use stone they just must use directly to put between uh, each stone even we just know in uh, Hinduism would say, but not too much uh, building use mortar. We have, but not too much. And we still don't know all of the much information about mortar in uh, building both of the Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islamic uh, uh, cultural heritage. So I think that that's all of the information today. So we would like to say uh, thank you so much for, I represent, I represent of the Association of Indonesian Archaeologists and also Department of Archaeology. We hope in the future we have collaboration, uh, reset our uh, information, share knowledge, and everything that we can do to re related to the preservation of our archaeological, pure archaeological research. So, Jesse, thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and thank you for all. And please host share the second uh, list of attendance for all of the participants. And if you have done to fill up the form, and you can leave it the. Uh, from. And thank you so much for all of the participants today. We have a lot of some uh, participants. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. It's a free time. If you want to, yeah, if you want to talk, please you can talk now because we have free time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would like to thank for all finalists and also all participants. Maybe we can make a photo. Some photos, uh, group photos. <laughs> For the documentation, Erwin. Yeah, for documentation, maybe all of the, maybe all, yeah. we asked all of the participants to uh, give on 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 your video in order to take uh, pictures uh, as the uh, responsible for the our committee. So, uh, host, please uh, share the. Okay, I think the list of attendance participants already shared. For the participant, please fill up the form. And well, of the participant, please turn on your video, and the host will take pictures uh, together as the yes, the last uh, session of this uh, webinar. So we wait. Please, all of the uh, participant, turn on your video, and we'll have uh, pictures together before we close this webinar in this afternoon. Okay, host. May you take pictures, all of the participants. Yes. And Let me know if you have that. To join the next webinar. Yes. <laughs> we will inform you that uh, we will have uh, another session of the, our webinar. It's about archaeobotany. 
and we will have on the 29th of uh, August and we will share it uh, information to the uh, to the social media on the WhatsApp group so if you want to join you still have time to register for this uh, next webinar we would like to talk about archaeobotany and the speaker is from the Max Planck Institute Germany and also Institute of Science uh, Lipi Jakarta Indonesia so it's give more information about uh, uh, bio the archaeological material special for archaeobotany so if you want to join uh, you can uh, register and we will meet again in Saturday. Yes, thank you. Is anybody want to talk? Yeah, you can talk. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. <clears throat>